Sometimes we talk about it, sometimes we don't. But we're all getting a little bit older and just maybe we ought to do some planning. Retirement is a wonderful word. And that's the subject today on FOCUS. I'm Wes Tallon, thanks for joining me. At the FOCUS Roundtable are three experts on this subject. Alicia Lipscomb, Public Affairs Specialist with the Social Security Administration. Sharon Johnson, Director of the Woody Fight Senior Center. And Patty Puckett, Investment and Financial Advisor with Ameriprise. Ladies, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Retirement is kind of the light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, some of us are probably getting there a little closer than some of the others of us here at the table. I can see it coming, but I want to make sure that the light coming at the table isn't another train coming at me and, uh, you know, making me have a train wreck here. Retirement is something for which we need to plan, but when does it happen and how does it happen? When is retirement age? Well, at Social Security, the earliest age for anybody to file for retirement is age 62. And the latest point is age 70. If you were to start your benefits at age 62, you're locked into 75% for the rest of your life. And those amounts change. They get The reduction gets smaller and smaller as so you get closer to your own full retirement age. And full retirement age is based on what year that you're born. So it varies for people. It's no longer 65 anymore, like most people think. Uh, that change happened back in 1983. So a lot of baby boomers weren't aware of it because it didn't apply to them at that point. So we encourage you to go to socialsecurity.gov to look up your full retirement age. It's also called FRA or FRA. You may hear that term um, in the public or um, with financial advisors. But that's the age where somebody qualifies for 100% of your benefit computation. The Social Security does something pretty neat. For every single month, you choose to delay your Social Security benefits from your own full retirement age up to age 70. We give you sort of bonus money for waiting. It comes out to 8% per year. So if my full retirement age this year was 66, and I'm still working, and I'm waiting to start my Social Security benefits, and I decided to wait till age 70, I would get 132% of my benefit computation. So that makes a big difference in terms of benefits. But again, it's your personal choice when you want to start to receive benefits. We always advise people, Social Security was never intended to be your sole source of retirement benefits. It only replaces up to 40% of your income. So you've got to plan in other aspects in order to have enough income throughout your retirement. Social Security didn't even exist until 80 years ago? 1935, years ago? yes. Something like that. So this is really almost a, uh, maybe the only the second generation or so that may be pulling Social Security. Yeah, and the baby boomers are the, a big group. Are, are a big group in doing that. So you're saying that uh, it's not locked in at 65? Not so anymore. it may be 66? 66 in two months, 66 in eight months, but the key part to remember is anybody born between 1943 and 1954, that's our key baby boomer group, mm -hmm. their full retirement age is age 66. Okay. And then it increases by two months up to 1960. Then 1960 or later, the full retirement age is 67. So people have to work longer. A lot of people are working longer, which is interesting. We're starting to see that trend there. Okay. So, I don't know, I was kind of ingrained to think that it was 65. You know? Well, 65 is the earliest age for Medicare, mm -hmm. which is often a huge decision point in when to retire. Mm -hmm. Unless you have a pension-based insurance plan, mm -hmm. many people have to wait on the Social Security mm -hmm. age of 65 to be able to get the Medicare benefit. Mm -hmm. But we talk to clients about, particularly with couples, maximizing one of the benefits, uh, making the larger benefit more meaningful by waiting. Mm -hmm to at least the full retirement age if possible, or perhaps if you want to work part-time or a little bit longer, let it grow that 8% a year. So it's really an individual decision, but it also depends on what other assets you have, what other income you have, and really your lifestyle. Um, someone who needs 3,000 a month is a different situation than someone who needs 6,000 a month to live comfortably and enjoy life. Okay, I hadn't thought about the Medicare thing because Medicare does kick in at 65, 65. Part A and you have to apply, if I remember right, either three months ahead of your 65th birthday or three months after for your Part A, and that's legal. 
Right. You can do it three months before 65. If you're already getting cash benefits from Social Security, mm -hmm. you're going to be automatically enrolled into Medicare Part A, which is your inpatient. You pay zero dollars a month for that because you've already paid for it through your taxes. And the Medicare Part B, if you're already getting benefits from us, you're automatically enrolled too. But we have some people who are choosing to continue to work and delay their Social Security and they may be actively employed somewhere and they have health insurance through their employer. They have the ability to sign up for the Medicare Part A if they want to. It's zero dollars a month. There's no monthly premium for it. But they have the option of saying no to the Medicare Part B because they are A, actively working, and they have health insurance through that employer. But we okay. always advise people, check with your HR department first before you make that decision. Many times the workplace coverage can become mm -hmm. a supplement. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the other key decision at the Medicare age is are you going to go with the traditional Medicare supplements or do you want to look at Advantage plans? And those are very important decisions and can be revisited each year as well after 65. Do most people retire at 65? 66? Not in my case. <laughs> <laughs> Preach it here. <laughs> uh, I just turned 70 so. and I choose to keep working. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm definitely a type A person and have to be doing something mm -hmm. all the time. But it is interesting that I do have Medicare Part A, mm -hmm. but I also have county insurance here mm -hmm. too. A um, couple years ago, I did have a health problem. I had a heart attack. And I was amazed at how the health insurance and the Medicare took care of both of me. Mm -hmm. I do know that a number of our seniors over at the center have either a supplemental plan or something for their Medicare. And I don't think that a lot of people are aware of the fact that some of these plans carry extra benefits. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Silver Sneakers program. That's not a bunch of people out running around in silver <laughs> you know, tennis shoes. That's not it. But it is a wellness program that is so beneficial. And if they had that, we have several exercise classes that require an instructor. And um, if they have this insurance that provides them with this wellness program called Silver Sneakers, and there are other programs in that, uh, they would not have to pay for those particular classes. Um, so I think people need to be very, very careful about the insurance that they choose. Uh, the supplemental plans that they choose to see where they are. You know, what are their needs? Do they have medical needs? Mm -hmm. and, and how do you apply that to what you're going to be getting? Okay, so as you're planning for retirement, that's one of the things. You've chosen not to retire at the traditional age, but you can retire as early as 62, mm -hmm. get your SSA mm -hmm. uh, benefits. Start your benefits. And then, you know, we're talking about financial responsibilities and your, your Medicare and all, but there's something psychological about retiring, setting that goal and retiring at about 65. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's been ingrained into mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. in, in our generation that you're going to retire at about that age. And some of it may be the sliding scale mm -hmm. on the age. So right now for, for this group of baby boomers, it may be 66 or 66 plus whatever months mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, you've decided not to do that. Right. Why do people retire? They're ready is, is one of the key answers mm -hmm. and they're looking forward to it. They're retiring mm -hmm. to something. Mm -hmm. uh, I love to hear my clients say, I don't know how I had time to work because mm -hmm. they're so busy with activities and family and travel and church and volunteering that they're enjoying life. So, I mean, that's a wonderful result. Um, other people due to health or family concerns may have to retire early. So it's always a very individual decision, but I think most people look forward to having the freedom. And I think about retirement not so much as a destination, but a start of a new journey. They're looking forward to a different phase of their life. Okay, I opened this up by saying, you know, the light at the end of the mm -hmm. tunnel. I want to make sure that light wasn't coming at me. But that light at the end of the tunnel, I, I agree with the, the, the word that you use, freedom. Mm -hmm. That hopefully you have financial freedom a little bit so you're not super dependent on that paycheck that you've had for so many years mm -hmm. or whatever. And your Social Security mm -hmm. benefit, if you've qualified and done all of that. Uh, 
you know, so that when you come out of that tunnel into the daylight, you have, uh, you know, there are options. And you just said some of them travel. Family, volunteer, church. Sleeping late. <laughs> yeah, but my seniors don't yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and some people start that second career that they, mm -hmm. they always wanted to do. We're starting to see yeah. that. People doing the things that they love. Like Miss Sharon is still doing what she loves. Exactly. And that's mm -hmm. an example. And I think if you're passionate about something, people will continue to work or find something else to do. And I think they discover maybe things. We ha have five different types of art classes at the center. And I hear people who come in and say, I've never done this before. I've always wanted to. And boom, all of a sudden, they did, you know, they realize, hey, I have a talent for this. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's very rewarding for them. And I think knowing what the resources are out in the community mm -hmm. is so important to seniors. If all of a sudden you're not going to that eight to five job every day, what am I going to do with my time? Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned, you know, there's, there's a number of things, the volunteering. Um, there's so many of our churches here in the county that uh, offer ministry to seniors. You know, they'll get together once a month and either have a lunch or have a program for that, or they take trips, the apple picking trip, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and we've got one of those going. So um, th there's lots of opportunities. I think a lot of people just don't realize how many resources there are for mm -hmm. seniors. We have a little book at the center, and I'd invite everybody to come by and pick up one that lists a lot of, of resources for them, housing, information about social security, about estate planning. Um, so many people just retire and it's like, you know, what am I doing here? Where do I go from here? Okay, so it sounds like we need a retirement plan. Mm -hmm. We've been right. talking mainly about financial. Mm -hmm. So no, well, we, need, we need a lifestyle we need plan too? A lifestyle mm -hmm. plan too. And I think it's so important that we in Douglas County, and we have been lauded for this by people outside the county, we actually have two senior centers here. We have mine, which is an activity center, 55 and over active adult, and that's definitely what they are. We serve one population, but there's also another population that needs to be served, and that's the one Douglas Senior Services is serving. They have the, the minivans that go around on certain routes and pick up seniors. Um, they do, you know, bring them to the center and they do different activities with them. They also have Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm. And Meals on Wheels is, is really a fantastic thing for people who are living alone and may not be able to cook anymore. So uh, there, there's a number of resources that a lot of people are not drawing on and they should be. Okay, so the, the phrase I keep hearing is don't retire to expire. Exactly. And, you know, keep yourself active. You've got to have the money, though, so that you are not worried mm -hmm. about um, how to pay the power bill, how to pay the, the mm -hmm. gas bill, and things like that. So retirement plan actively, financial, is, Patty, is there a rule of thumb on um, how much money you should have in the mattress? <laughs> well, hopefully not in the mattress. But, uh, <laughs> we look at everyone's situation individually, and it's really all about your expenses. And it's important 10 or 15 years before retirement, ideally, to really start fine-tuning the expenses that you will have in retirement. And Social Security is such a, an, an important part of the income. I would use a quick rule of thumb. If you think about three to one as a sort of a cheat sheet, for every $1,000 per month in income that you might get from Social Security or a pension, you would have to save 300000 to generate that somewhat safely at a 4% withdrawal rate. So when you're thinking about Social Security, it's not just a monthly income, it's an amount of savings that you didn't have to do to have a guaranteed monthly income. And the same thing is true for a pension. And particularly, you want to know what your Social Security estimates are, if you have a pension, what that estimate is, and then what do you need to supplement with savings to have a good lifestyle, and particularly cover your essential expenses with as much fixed income and guaranteed income as possible. And the rest of your money can be towards lifestyle items, the travel, the fun, the things that are more variable in monthly cost. 
but having a good essential coverage uh, of your power bills and, and the basic things with Social Security, a pension, or a good safe fixed income stream is very important. Gives you a lot of peace of mind. This sounds a little complicated. It can be. So are there people like yourself? Is, is this what you do? It is essentially. I mean, the Retirement planning? Retirement planning, planning and financial planning are a key part of what I do and investment advisory as well. But the key is working with each couple or each individual to understand what's important to them. What's their family situation? Are they helping with children or parents as well? Um, do they need to downsize a house later on or want to downsize? And it's really about trying to match the expenses with the income and resources to live very comfortably and not be stressed about money every month. Okay, so financial advisors are part of this planning for retirement. And uh, you know they do that. There are professionals like yourself who can help that. Are there advisors to help with the lifestyle planning? It, there are. And uh, one thing when we bring a new member into the center, we always give them a tour, give them a schedule of everything that we offer over there. And from at least once a month, we will have a seminar uh, covering different things. We just had one yesterday for arthritis. Mm -hmm. We'll have one for, um, you know, finances. Uh, for Social Security, you have been over to the, to the Woody Pike mm -hmm. Center. So we try to educate people as to what is coming. Um, I think another aspect of this is years ago, uh, and you talk about the baby boom boomers, everybody's family almost lived in a compound. You know, everybody was in their own little circle. That is not true today. We have situations where we're such a transit society, people get moved. I've had a number of seniors who have moved into Douglas County because the kids were here. Maybe it's a couple, maybe it's a one that has lost a spouse and they want to be close to the children. They come here, they spend a few years, then all of a sudden that child gets transferred somewhere else. They don't want to leave Douglas County. I think a lot of them, you know, they love us, okay? Of course they do. <laughs> you know, they love the center. Yeah. And, and that's something that's important to them. And we have to be able to kind of treat everybody as family. And that's one thing that we do. Um, you know, I have some people that are there five days a week, you know, mm -hmm. doing various activities or classes or something. It's important for socialization when you mm -hmm. reach this, that, that you're not stuck in the house, laying back in the recliner watching TV all day long. You know, that is, that's not healthy. It mm -hmm. really is not. So we have, a, we have a number of options there, different interests that people have that they can come and enjoy and meet other folks. We've actually had three weddings come out Whoa. of uh, the Woody <laughs> Fight Center where people had lost spouses, they became acquainted with uh, someone within the center, fell in love, and got married. So that's the happy part. That's the happy part yeah. about, so we're talking about lifestyle planning and a little bit of financial planning. Um, and Patty, you said uh, 10 to 15 years out Ideally, uh, mm -hmm. it's so hard for younger people when they're starting a career, starting a home mm -hmm. and family. There's so many competing requirements on their time and money. Oh, yeah, house payment and car payment and, and, and kids, kids, and kids and you name school it. School and college education, and college like loans, that. unfortunately. Even think about retirement. But the earlier they can start, the better. It's much simpler uh, to start early. And the biggest advice I have for the younger generations of 30 year olds and 40 year olds is is make sure you're saving through your retirement plan at work and getting the company match. Uh, a lot of people don't take advantage mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. and that's essentially free money in your pocket with the match. And to a lot of younger people in their 20s and 30s, I say choose your career wisely and choose your company wisely. Uh, look at the benefits package. Make sure you've got a 401k or a pension plan. Uh, there are wonderful opportunities, government, hospitals, school systems, some large companies have tremendous benefits. And doing the same job at a company with great benefits versus one without great benefits can make a huge difference in your financial future. We've kind of <clears throat> gone to it and come back yeah. and mm -hmm. around like that, but 
How hard is it to apply for your Social Security benefits? It's not hard at all, actually. Um, we get a lot of comments from the public. They're surprised how quick and easy it is. Mm -hmm. um, you have an option of how you want to file for your benefits. We always en encourage people three months before the month you want to start. And that's the hard thing because people, it's that fear of, am I going to make a decision, this mm -hmm. and that. And it's, that's the hard part about it. So um, the earliest point is three months before you want to start. You can do it online. Our online application takes 15 minutes to complete. And we have to process those applications within three business days. Wow. And we do it very quickly. Um, just to give you an idea, in the state of Georgia, we have 2.1 million people receive a benefit from Social Security every month. We pay out $2 billion a month to residents in the state of Georgia. So Social Security is very important in terms of retirement planning, keeping people um, to meet their basic needs. But again, we encourage you to visit our website at socialsecurity.gov. You can use a tool called the Online Retirement Estimator. It helps you figure out those what-if scenarios. Most common scenario you see with somebody's about to retire, going back to moving in with the, spending time with the grandchildren is, do I want to start my benefits around Christmas time so I can be with my family, or do I want to wait till school's out? So I can see, so you right. can literally mm -hmm. to the month create up to three different scenarios. So these, when you have your numbers in front of you, going back to what Patty said, it's about meeting your basic needs and your expenses. You can see what number that Social Security has estimated you would receive per month. So that takes some of the questions out because when the numbers are there, the numbers don't lie. How you can meet your basic expenses. And you can use that tool. And you also can use our new online account system called My Social Security. It's an online portal. That's where you get that Social Security statement we used to mail you every year. Mm -hmm. That has how much you paid yes. into it, mm -hmm. and then it Your has estimated benefit. at the age mm -hmm. of blah, 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 you should Absolutely. get this much. Yeah. And if it, you were disabled, mm -hmm. you get, yeah, that so was a wonderful thing. It was a basic planning mm -hmm. tool. And about two years ago, we had to stop mailing them out because of cost. But we thought people are conducting business in a different way. How many of us use our phones to conduct business? How many of us bank online? When was the last time you wrote a right. check? I mean, so people are we're a very mobile society, going back to what Ms. Sharon said about we're transient. So you can use this online account system. You can view your statement whenever you want to. It's available there for you. You can print it. You can save it. Because we used to mail it. We're only mailing it every five years now. So as you're getting closer to that 10 to 15 years out to mm -hmm. retirement, you've really got to look at your numbers. And we allow you to say, this is what you're going to receive from Social Security at this point and this point and this point. We encourage everybody to create an online account. Um, there was a change in how you create an online account. It just happened on July 30th. You have to have a phone with text service on it because we're trying to make sure that everybody's information is safe. So when you're creating your account, you're going to have to enter in your cell phone number to receive a special code in order to enter or create an account. We did that as a security measure to make sure everybody's information is safe. So we just want to get the word out about that. For those who don't have the tech service, uh, we're work working on some workarounds for that, but it was due to an executive order that we had to institute this to make sure that everybody's information is safe and secure. Okay, so when you go to the, to your account, mm -hmm. you go to my Social Security, mm -hmm. do your little password and mm -hmm. whatever it is like that, mm -hmm. then they're going to send you a security code yes, sir. on text. Mm -hmm. You enter that in and then you've got to... Right, and you'll have to use it when you're creating the account, which usually takes less than five minutes. Mm -hmm. If you have a credit freeze on any of your accounts, which a lot of people do as a result of the breaches, um, most federal employees do because we had a, a breach with our yes. information. Mm -hmm. So um, if you do, you can actually visit your local office. You don't have to lift your credit freeze. We give you a special code called an activation code. That's a separate code on top of the security code we text you when you create your account. So you don't you can bypass all those questions they would ask you. Such a, they're called out of pocket questions. Where did you live? Do you have the following credit cards? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can forget. I actually got locked out the first time I created my account because <laughs> I forgot that my uh, my mortgage company, it, they, they sold my loan mm -hmm. you know, and those kind of things. So you've got to make sure that information is correct. But if you're not sure about it and you just rather come to the local office and state, I want an activation code to create my online account, you can do that. And um, you can visit the office in Villa Rica. They're on South Carroll Road and they can take mm -hmm. care of you there. Okay, the office, I'm, I want to go ahead and pitch for the uh, SSA office in Villa Rica. Uh, you, from Douglas County, you go, we, uh, go west on Interstate 20 mm -hmm. to the Highway 61 exit, mm -hmm. and then you go south toward Carrollton. It's only like the third traffic light on the mm -hmm. left. Yeah. You can't miss it. It's a beautiful it's a big, building. Big, beautiful brick building, I think. It used to be a bank. It used to be a bank. Or and, something. And our office hours have changed. Um, they changed over a year ago, but some people, they only come to Social Security usually for three, basically they need a replacement card or they have questions or they're getting ready to file for some type of benefit from us. So a lot of people, we, we're not 
a constant visit. It's only at certain points in your life do you need us. So our office hours nationwide. We have 1,300 offices nationwide. Oh, just 1,300. Just 1,300, yeah. right. And we only have about 950 employees in the state of Georgia that serve those 2.1 million people. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, just to give you an idea of the workloads we have. Um, on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, we are open to the public from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Wednesdays, we are only open from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. So Thursdays obviously are a very, very busy day. Mm -hmm. So think wisely, plan correctly if you need to visit us. But remember, you can visit our website to answer, get a lot of answers to your questions. You can also call us on our 1-800 number, 1-800-772-1213. And those lines are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. if you have any questions or need to make some adjustments. And one of the greatest benefits of where it's located is uh, you can go and have uh, breakfast at the Bojangles next door. <laughs> Great biscuits. Yeah, I mean. And then I'll be there in line at 9 o'clock when you need to be. There's one more thing about retirement I, I want to address with, with y'all in that, you know, we were talking about what you can do after you retire and lifestyle and mm -hmm. your planning and things like that. I would think that most of us are going from an extremely structured environment working eight mm -hmm. to five, nine to four, whatever right. like that. And you're going into an unstructured environment. You are going from a steady paycheck to something, might be investments, <laughs> social security, but you know, every two weeks, every 30 days, whatever you've got, you know, that check landed in there. Seems like this could be stressful. Um, you know, you are giving up one kind of stress. Mm -hmm. A lot of us have very stressful jobs. And you're going to a lifestyle that you hopefully, that hopefully will lower your blood pressure. <laughs> you know, you can lose weight, you can, you know, lower your cholesterol numbers and all of that stuff. But it seems to be maybe being replaced with a different kind of stress. I think that's true. Um, I know we get some folks who come in and want to join the center and um, they go through this phase of I don't know what I want to do you know I just found out about y'all well what, what can I do so we always try to go back and look at, at their lifestyle through the years I mean they may have been playing uh, bid whist or euchre one of the card games back when they were a child and I will offer that for them we have several different card groups that do that. Well, I, I'm not sure. I don't know. It's been so long ago. I, and I'll put them in there, and everybody is always so helpful about either teaching them a brand new game or helping them remember some things. So I think that is helping some with the stress. When they come back, they come back to something familiar, or they are so engrossed in uh, discovering something new. And I always so important that each one, one of us, no matter what, where, what point we are in life, that we try to move on and learn something new, do something different, you know. You know, one of you said earlier to the point of that may be a chance for almost a second career mm -hmm. or a, mm -hmm. a part-time job or, yeah. or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, I can see that very much, but I, I've got a technical question. Mm -hmm. If you have a second job or uh, to, how does that affect your Social Security? Well, with Social Security, we every year we have what is called the earnings test. It only applies to somebody who's actually receiving a monthly retirement benefit from us and they have returned back to work. And we don't count pensions, savings, investments, as anything you've done off the side. It's only actually working for somebody, getting a W-2 or running your own business. The general rule is once you hit your month, you hit your full retirement age, you can make as much as you want. It does not affect your benefits at all. I call it freedom age, mm -hmm. going back to the whole right. freedom principle. Okay, we're like about. that. Freedom, freedom age, age. retirement age, age, freedom age. Write that word down. So you've got that as a, a, a way, that's what a lot of people will do. They'll wait to mm -hmm. go back to work at 66, even if they took their Social Security benefits, say at 64, 65. So they get a breather, they can figure out what they want to do. Exactly. It's that transition. It sort of slows them down, and then they'll come back and say, I want to go. I met my, one of the guys at Pub, my local Publix. He's a former professor. He said he wanted something to do. He wanted to be around people, so he got a job at Publix. He says it's three or four times a week. Keeps me busy, keeps me active, but, it's, but he also said, 
I know it won't affect my Social Security benefits because we had that right. conversation about mm -hmm. that. But anybody below their full retirement age, every year the amounts do change. So we advise you to go back to our website at socialsecurity.gov and type in yearly earnings test so you can see the amounts. But the general rule is for every $2 you go over the yearly amount, we withhold $1 of your benefits if you're under full retirement age. So that's the other part you need to think mm -hmm. about if you're when you want to start to receive your benefits because you may be earning so much that you're actually decreasing your benefits down to zero. So was it worth to file for benefits? Okay, mm -hmm. and all of this you can do under the My Social Security? Actually, this is separate from the My Social okay. Security, which is good because some people just want to just do some number crunching. So you just go to our retirement page, retirement planners page, socialsecurity.gov slash retirement, and you can pull that up. And also for those who are working and already getting, and already getting a benefit, you can actually use your My Social Security account to see your earnings, if you need to change your address because you moved somewhere else, your phone number, your direct deposit, you can use that My Social Security account. It follows you where you go and whatever decisions you make once you start to receive benefits. Okay, so our message today is plan for the future. And know your mm -hmm. benefits mm -hmm. and know your full retirement age. FRA or full mm -hmm. retirement age is a critical piece of planning because it gives you the freedom at that point to work as much as you want and you may not want to take your benefit earlier if it hurts you uh, because you are continuing to work. I would also add to be sure you understand the other benefits which may be available mm -hmm. to you. Particularly, I've run into cases where someone who is divorced uh, divorces at nine years and if they had divorced at ten years they'd be eligible for a benefit on their ex-spouse. So there are other considerations. The widow's or widower's benefit is another key consideration. And that's one reason we say to couples, maximize that largest benefit because when one person is left, that's essentially the benefit you'll receive. You, you lose the smaller benefit. So there's lots of planning considerations with Social Security. It's a tremendous benefit. You know, treat it like a nest egg. It really is. And you want to make the smart decisions. And that's why we advise you to create that online account so you can view your statement. Your statement isn't just about retirement. It also lists disability. What if something happens to you you're unable to work? Mm -hmm. And when you pass away, what is there for your spouse? We're just not a retirement program. We're actually the world's largest insurance program. Mm -hmm. We insure you in the event of your retirement, your death, and your disability. So use this as a tool. The information is there for you to make sure the what if scenarios. What if this were to happen? Because life throws us lemons sometimes mm -hmm. and we've got to figure out your options. Exactly. But if you plan mm -hmm. and you have an idea of what to expect, that's going to make such a difference in the stress level. We've all been mm -hmm. talking about that transition and the stress. So take advantage of it. Create that account. Um, have a conversation with your spouse. It's very important. We tell couples to talk to each other about retirement benefits. Because going back to the survivor mm -hmm. uh, subject that we just talked about, if my husband were to take his benefits at 62 and he were to pass away, I'm locked into that amount, which is only 75%. It's not 100%. So it's very important to have that conversation. Take advantage of the tools we have on our website. Give us a call. Talk directly to the source and also talk to outside um, sources to help you plan for the what ifs that may happen. So Social Security, go to the website, you know, start your planning mm -hmm. there. Talk to a financial investment advisor. Mm -hmm. Stash away what money you can, mm -hmm. when you can, particularly with your uh, workplace employer, plan. workplace mm -hmm. matching, things like mm -hmm. that. Don't retire to expire. Exactly. <laughs> Decide, you know, something that you want to do. Ladies, thank you so much for the information. Uh, now we hope that you know a little bit more so that you can be better prepared. We're not getting any younger. <laughs> and I hope our show has brought some focus into this subject for you. I'm Wes Talon. Thanks for joining me.